Hi, uh, I'm Eben Upton, one of the founders of Raspberry Pi. Greetings to everyone at the Shanghai Maker Carnival for, from, the, from us here at Pi Towers in Cambridge. Um, it's been, a, I guess it's been an interesting few years, hasn't it? Um, we've spent, obviously, a good fraction of the last year dealing with the, uh, dealing with the COVID pandemic. We haven't let that slow us down at Raspberry Pi. We actually launched more products in 2020 uh, than we've launched in any previous year. We launched our high quality camera. We launched the eight gigabit, uh, the eight gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, we launched Raspberry Pi 400, of course, which is our first purely con consumer targeted product of Raspberry Pi built into a compact keyboard. And we launched a Compute Module 4, uh, which is another uh, entry in our line of offerings for the industrial and embedded market. What's been really interesting to me about 2021, though, is the way that is how rapidly the world has rebounded. If 2020 was remarkable for people's efforts to keep going, keep doing business under very, very difficult conditions, 2021 has been a story about re about rebound, and it's been a story about growth. We've seen enormous demand. For Raspberry Pi uh, products this year uh, to the level that we are just working frantically every day to get more and more and more Raspberry Pi products through the, uh, 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 through the factory. I've been amazed by the things that people have been doing with all of our products, particularly with Compute Module 4. You have to remember this is a product that was launched only a year ago in October 2020, has already seen, generally for us, Compute Module products are, I guess you could characterize them as a slow burn. Uh, they're products that see relatively modest initial sales as people buy them, design them into products, and the volume sales only come along two, maybe three years later. In fact, we're still seeing growth in demand for Compute Module 3 and Compute Module 3 Plus, which are three and four year old products respectively. Um, what's been really interesting about Compute Module 4, perhaps because of the overall macro environment, perhaps because it's a product that we've designed to be even more easily integrable into your project um, than uh, Compute Module 3 or 3 Plus. Um, we've seen that product go to volume, go to scale much faster than anything we've done before, selling tens of thousands of compute module fours a month at a time when really we were only expected to sell thousands. They're finding their way into a very, very broad range of products, everything from fully finished consumer products that rely on compute module four to provide the computing power, the computing and multimedia power, um, uh, all the way through to things which are different kinds of development board. We provide a device called uh, the Compute Module 4 I.O. board, which is our idea or a reference baseboard. But actually, the interesting thing about Compute Module 4 is that other people are finding ways to make differentiated developer platforms that compete with, and that's a good thing, that compete with our Compute Module 4 uh, I.O. board. Uh, this is also the year, of course, that we started shipping Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, which is the first product based on silicon designed at Raspberry Pi. That's the RP2040 microcontroller. We've been really encouraged. That's a $4 product, right? So this is the cheapest computing product. I think it's the cheapest product we've ever made. Certainly the cheapest product that can compute. Um, we've been really surprised, amazed, gratified um, by the level of enthusiasm for that product in the market. People have been, you know, we, we continue actually to work to service our backlog. We still have about, we've shipped over a million units. We still have nearly a half million unit backlog for that product. Uh, people have really taken it to their hearts. Like a lot of Raspberry Pi products, it's something which is cost effective enough that people build them into their projects and then rather than taking them out and recycling them in, into a new project, leave them inside the, inside the first project and buy another one. So we've seen a lot of interest. We've seen a lot of uh, multi-unit orders, seen interest from around the world, had some wonderful support, particularly one I guess I should call out Cytron in Malaysia, who've built some wonderful products um, around, first around Pico, and then more recently around RP2040, because in addition to making our own RP2040 product, we've supported a number of our closest partners with early access to the RP2040 silicon itself. Uh, what do I think the, future, the next 12 months, the rest of 2021 and uh, 2022 have in store for us? I mean, I think continued challenges around component availability. We continue to work extremely hard to make Raspberry Pi products available in the market. Um, I hope we'll see um, uh, more RP2040 products. I think there are something like 50 distinct RP2040. We're nine months into the, the existence of that chip. Um, oh, there's something like 50 distinct RP2040 products in the market. Uh, we'll see more of that. Uh, we have an aspiration right now, 
you can buy those RP2040 products, you can buy RP2040 in small quantities. Um, our partners at JLC PCB uh, in China will support you in designing products um, around RP2040. Uh, but we're not yet at a point where it's available in genuine mass distribution, you know, millions of units available next day, which is kind of the aspiration. It was always the aspiration for Raspberry Pi products is that they should be available in large quantities the next day. We're not there yet with RP2040, but we're probably no more than two or three months away from that. We'll go into 2022, although this is a constrained environment for semiconductor manufacturing, we will go into 2022 with between 10 and 20 million die, RP2040 die in die banks. So we are expecting to be able to service any demand for RP2040 uh, from any customer. Um, in terms of the customers we're ex most excited about, the customers we are most excited about are maker businesses. We are most excited about supporting those maker businesses who can't buy an, ES who, who can't buy an STM32, uh, who can't buy uh, an NXP chip, who can't buy a microchip chip. We are excited about supporting those businesses which might otherwise struggle and fail for want of, uh, of, of silicon. We've been supporting those businesses on a case-by-case -case basis in 2021. Um, we're very excited in 2022 about being able to support those businesses at scale and really without restriction. Um, so for all the challenges, this has been an interesting couple of years for us, and we think 2022 looks extremely bright. I hope you have a wonderful time at the carnival. I really wish I could be there to join you. It has been too long uh, since, I was, uh, since I was in China, uh, and hopefully, 2022 will bring more opportunities for us to come out and hang out with you all. Best of luck.